See that red light came up? Gotcha. Now, what did you say about my coming to visit you on the motorcycle? Okay. My name is Bill Lee, and I live in Ducktown, Tennessee. Been there about Come on in here. Come 45 in here. years. Got a wife named Hattie Lorraine. And I got a big house and plenty of room, and I'm inviting this guy right here and any of his compadres to come and spend the night with us. Oh, that's it. All right. <laughs> now, well, tell me a little bit about this Siberia trip you're going to make a trip with. Okay. In February, we're going uh, with the Franklin Graham Medical Evangelistic Group to a town called Provedinia, which is in Siberia. We'll be doing uh, medical work and uh, don't know exactly what's going to happen after that. But anyway, uh, we're looking forward to it. That's super, Bill. When, and when do you come back from the February trip? How long are you there for? I'll uh, be there one month. So you're back in March? Uh -huh. Middle of March or so? Yeah. So, uh, well, you have a wonderful trip, and I'll probably see you when you're back in March. All righty. Take care. Garden which is kind of nice because the sun itself heats them up. They really need very little heat inside. We do have oil stoves, um, but it's cloudy out if you get cold. And then here are some of our just uh, mimicking McDonald's. And uh, we had a lot of good times in, in these huts. We uh, were in a whiteout. We couldn't see a thing. And we don't know where crevasses are. They can be anywhere. And you can't see anything in a whiteout. And I should, I keep forgetting, I should bring the other slide. I took a picture of this um, when it was white out, and all you'd see are the tents. They look like they're floating in the air. But suddenly, after about uh, 24 hours, whereas, and uh, coupons can uh, buckle on these very quickly, you can just step into them. And uh, I learned early in my career never leave your ice axe somewhere, and never leave your crampons. Always have them. I'm always having to tell my people that work with me. Got to have your camp on. Really greatly expanded our ability to roll places. We can fly up to 300 miles away now with a twin otter, carry sled, motor fog, and people, and uh, set up camps where we never could before without the help. And it's 9,186 meters? Yes. No feet. So it's, it's almost two miles. Yeah, nice to can see over 9,000 feet. That's all it is. It's, it's just damn cold there. Other than that, I can't say much about it. How do they know it's a soft cold? Uh, they can, uh, they're actually, they, no, they survey it every year. Damn. It's not my birthday, you must look at it's not very useful. It's Canadian. It's got a number of pictures of the I hope they do too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've got a radar outpost and they monitor traffic coming around. Uh, and uh, there's a cross up there. And a, a uh, statue, sorry, a statue of uh, an albatross in relief. Your homes, or you, you all left your homes in the United States November 30th, uh, expecting to fly to Ushuaia. Mm -hmm. You arrived in uh, the airport and, and uh, ushered to our ship that was waiting just after uh, the repairs, the emergency repairs, I guess, if you will, at the uh, dry dock in Buenos Aires. All of that to makes up for, for a whole uh, interesting experience in its own. But then we, we got on board the ship, and, and you folks... Uh, came aboard, I guess, with smiles and tears, and uh, we're set to go. We left that afternoon from Buenos Aires. I think it was about day, correct me if I'm wrong, was it day it was four the at sea? No, uh, the evening of day three, I think. Four, four, four. And then we were very excited because we were now in the Drake Passage, uh, into the Southern Ocean, and, and beyond that, even in some senses, they call, it, they call uh, the area there that we just passed through the Roaring Forties. And uh, then we got into the 50 degree latitude, and, and some call that the furious 50s. And it uh, wasn't too furious when we were there. It was pretty happy to see us. Uh, and then we continued on, so getting uh, past 60, the, the convergence was where we saw the, uh, the, uh, the, the pot of uh, 15 or so fin whales. All different sizes. Some of those were definitely young. Some were full-grown uh, adults. So that was very George Island. Uh, that evening. We arrived at, at this corner, I think it was around uh, a little after midnight, 
and we sailed along the inside or the Bransfield Strait side of the South Shetland Islands. Up here uh, in this area at, uh, at Penguin Island and spending uh, the day in, in the area of King George Island. But when we realized we were making such good time, we figured a good way to ensure that we could get down to the, uh, to the peninsula and, and uh, site and maybe land on the continent itself, we figured it was a good idea to, to keep sailing hard that night and make it as far south as we could for the, for the morning's landings. So we bypassed King George Island and we sailed into Half Moon Island very early in the morning. Uh, this, this strait here is called the McFarland Strait and this little crescent shaped island, that's where we landed. This is uh, uh, Livingston Island and I believe that's Robert Island right there. At Half Moon Island, do you remember we landed in that small cove, very sheltered, and we had a very light breeze. Uh, we climbed up to yeah, about 45 minutes there in Hannah Point. Glad that you all got a little taste of that and that you got your, your chance. <laughs> From, uh, from Half Moon Island, we, we then uh, set sail, particularly exciting because it's, it's our first time here this year, but we, in the last several years we'd see them in that bay quite a bit. So it's nice to see that they're back again. They made it all, the, all that way, and they're ready to spend the summer here also. We sailed along this, uh, this shore of Livingston Island and then turned to the right or to the, almost to the north. When we, we sailed through the opening, the opening, by the way, is about 1,500 feet across, uh, on, the, on the right side going in, those cliffs are about, I think it was 1,200 feet. Uh, and we sailed through, made a hard right turn uh, into Whalers Bay, the site of an abandoned whaling station called Hecla Whaling Station, which was used by the Norwegians and then by the, by the uh, British. We were, we were blessed again with good water. Sometimes uh, it cleared right up again. And, uh, and we had watched, the, some of us on the bridge watched the sunset and had terrific visibility in getting our first sights wonderful icebergs in this area uh, from Trinity Island here and all the way on down and all the crazy shape on for the summer there and, and uh, then hightailed it out of there and with a blow of the horn they took off. We thought about going there but it, uh, across and board towards La Mer but he's, he'd made a right turn and sailed through there in Herrera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that, are both sides of those islands called the same thing? The river is are both sides of the islands? Yeah. Yeah, the whole islands. The, the straits. Of the Americas, uh, straight ahead, uh, you find home. The island of Horn. 2,000 miles. <laughs> Off to the, uh, to the right, in one of the okay. lower areas of the island, you'll see the statue. Uh, we were oh, yeah. to Excuse me, I want to get one shot. Our boat comes in close. Right. That's what this one does. Yeah, that's what that's what the talk is. It well, is just a small one. We are going to leave first the port. The port is located in the main city center of Ushuaia, and uh, we are going uh, southwestward. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Three thousand kilometers in La Quisia. Tropegos means false beach. We have beach trees. Beach trees. Preform portions. Notice as we came in, the roof is a standing sea, standing sea metal roof done in blue on the outside. Okay. Inside, you notice a number of skylights that make it airy, beautiful. Very pleasant. The uh, bolts that are holding it all together. Very powerful. Come to visit our city. Feel like if you are at home. Okay. We have a. a what is the what is the powder? What is it made from? The mini sitting there and watching the traffic flow and did not hear a horn for about 30 minutes as I smoked a cigar and walked along the streets. Here's the first horn club here in. So the name in Spanish is Circulo Militar. Metal power. Not the Police have now arrested the victim's neighbor. They tracked him down in Michigan. They say he committed the murder in Louisiana, then drove to Atlanta and dumped the body. 
A DeKalb County grand jury has indicted a teenage.